Hi, I'm Trixie Mattel. And I'm Cassia. And welcome to our show, where each week we dive so deep into a topic that we get absorbed by it. Yeah, like a parasitic twin in the womb. <sighs> this week's topic, spirituality. <sighs> We're going to get biblical, hit the streets of God's kingdom, and discover the sexier side of organized religion. I may appear white, but I'm largely Native American. That is so fascinating to me. I know. In Native American religion, we believe in the Great Spirit, which is yeah. like, we just basically believe everything's connected. Yeah. And when you die, you go back into the earth. And... She's not dead, she's still with you. It's like, no, but like, <laughs> the cells of her body, the yeah. carbon that created the person. Rotting. Yeah, it's rotting and it's beautiful. But the life force has moved on. Yeah. Yeah. The life force now keeps my iPhone yeah. at above 20%. Powers my shake weight. Well, I was raised Catholic, so it's just the same old rigmarole of like boring, stifling, oppressive. Mostly boring, though. I would always ask my parents, why is this important? They'd be like, it just is. Like, why is it important? It will be like, you'll find out later. It's like, no, that's not good enough. It's, also, you tell me what? Plot twist, you don't find out later. Bitch, exactly. <laughs> so the joke is on them when, like, you know, I refuse to be confirmed in the Catholic Church. I don't have the time. I don't have the also, time. Also, here's the tea people are born white. People are born gay. People are oh, born sure. whatever. Nobody's born right. a religion. Yeah. And if you can't give me like a three sentence factual reason why this is important in my life. Because the woman in Connecticut saw Jesus' eyes in a, in a slice of right. raisin bread toast. I've said it before, I don't believe in God, but I fully fear him at all times. Does that make sense? That is, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. I'm like, God's not real. Does he hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's a healthy tension. <laughs> right? I do. I think that's what agnostic means, is you don't believe, but you... You don't deny. You don't, you don't firmly, deny. Yeah, yeah, you don't declare the If you idea. have no proof either way, who am I to say, yeah. there's no proof? It's like I'm open to whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's like when people are like, I'm not looking for a relationship, but like, not, it, something not. happened. <laughs> <laughs> have you been with somebody who has weird religious inhibitions? Yes. It's yes. crazy. Yeah, carrying the- You can't do it with the lights on. God will see. Holy moly. Or I have to take a shower like seconds after I come to wash the shame from my body. Re oh, you stepped on the rosary. <laughs> No, I'm not going to heaven. Oh, Nam Shiva. Oh, Nam Shiva. I grew up Catholic, so the whole domineering priest, nun, punishment fantasy is kind of old hat. I like the- You calm, lived it. Yeah. I like the calm, cool, compassionate, no underwear, orange robe wearing Buddhist on the beach with no shoes. Aww. Yeah. I just want a religious guy, like somebody who's like, after a long Saturday night, you know, he's like, I gotta get up early for church. I'm like, oh, we're going again. <laughs> it's easy to be an outsider for us because even religions that accept gay people, it's very like, Come on in, we even take your kind. Do right, you know right, right. Mean? They're never like woven into the fabric of the tradition. Yeah, We're never it's like, pillars of this. Welcome yeah. to church. How much money do you have? And yeah. your bubbler is over there. <laughs> yeah. Go out back. Don't talk to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. We'll let you know we need to redecorate the chapel. <sighs> This is what I firmly believe, that if you boil down the essence to any religious tradition, it's all the same shit. It's the message that is simple enough to be understood even by the village idiot, um, and practical enough to work in anybody's life. And it's like so simple. It's all the stuff you learn in kindergarten. Kindness, compassion, um, generosity, selflessness. Wash your ass. Yeah. You shouldn't need organized anything to know like, should I be garbage today? <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. No, you shouldn't want to be garbage. <laughs> You know? Well, a lot of people have differing ideas on what's garbage. So from Catholicism, I went to Satanism. From Satanism, I went to witchcraft. From witchcraft, I went into like gay witchcraft, fairy shit. There's a lot shit. of witches. Stones and crystals? Oh, absolutely stones and crystals. And then cards and um, bones and pills and potions, all that crap. I love that stuff, but I think it, like religion, it provides just another lens through which you can kind of view the events of your life. What about a palm reading? I know I have a short lifeline. I've been dead for eight You're gonna years. You're going to die up there, Marty. Yeah, you no, say th this every time you look at my hand. Well, I'm it eventually die. will come true. Um, let me see your hand. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of ambition. Yeah. And uh, you're a man. Thank you. <laughs>
The Ten Commandments are a part of a lot of people's basic moral code. Yeah, and we have our own version of the Ten Commandments. Here they are. Thou shalt hand wash your latex cat suits with soap and water and then store them in a cool, dry place out of the sun. That, I, 100%. You want to feel God's embrace? Wear a latex cat suit. Spandex is a right, not a privilege. <laughs> yeah. Thou shalt wait till your god damn. Thou shalt wait till your boarding group to stand in front of the gate. Yeah. Because, mama, I'm premium. <laughs> and your ass in group four, literally standing in front of the gate with your carry on and your ugly little kids. Yeah. It's about know thyself, accept thyself, know your garbage and stay in the can, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, it makes me want to scream. Yeah, I know, I know. Thou shalt not wear colored mascara. I hate colored mascara. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Why are your right, eyelashes right. blue? It's fun. It's not fun. Oh, don't kill people. That, I mean, we know that. Yeah. Thou shalt not stifle my creativity. Tomorrow you just have all different colored eyelashes. Thou shalt not listen to this dumb bitch about your eyelashes. <laughs> Thou shalt not call me a dumb bitch, you trick ass hoe. You don't know nothing about God or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thou shalt be accepting of others' flaws. While, yes. Thou shalt not remove the skin of a live person and wear it as a cape. Girl, that's not important. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to colored mascara, please. <laughs> Now, you guys know where we stand with the man, woman, slash, genderless, binary person upstairs, but it's time to hear from you guys. Yeah, you've submitted your questions through your Youth Pastors AOL page, so let's get to them. This is Asking for a Friend. Is there something sexy about the wrathful Old Testament God compared to the chill God of the New Testament? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's the genesis, no pun intended, of all, um, like, you know, domineering, uh, vengeful father figure sexual fantasies. At least mine. I don't know what happens in these novels. Uh -huh. uh, oh, it, you know. <laughs> but it seems like one of them is angry. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever worried that God is watching you pull the pad? Yes, if there is a God, don't you think that human being, person, woman, has better things to do than to watch me? Speak for yourself. I always switch it up, make it very interesting. Oh, so like, he's like, I wonder how she's doing it today. I, well, to extent I yeah. know you're on a trampoline. I need an audience, but I don't want to be videotaped, so that's perfect for me. And I, I mean, listen, God would not have made me with this bizarre, scaly appendage if he didn't intend me to yank on it. And on the so third well. day, God made your crayfish-looking dick. Yes. Yeah. That's in the Old Testament. When's the last time you tried to talk to God? I pray all the time. You do? Yeah. But you're not sure if he's real, right? I mean, I don't believe in God in the, in the like conventional sense. So, here's the thing. That is talking to yourself. Yes. OK. Yeah. Just okay. as effective. Just as effective. Oh, completely. Yeah, because you ever try to work out a problem and talk out loud in your bedroom? Yeah. What do I do with the body? All right. I'm on a second story window. That's not, that's not helpful. <laughs> yeah. Cults are terrible. But do you think you can be manipulated into joining one? Absolutely. Absolutely. I probably, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I probably would have been a victim of Charles Manson. Because the outfits? I don't know. It just, there's like a glamorous. The outfits were cute. What would your ideal god look and sound like? Now that's fun. Well, he's like six more. And he has like a lot of body hair, but like keeps it very under control. <laughs> like keeps it maintained. Um, he drives a Prius because he cares about the environment, but he could afford a nicer car if he wanted one. He plays PS4 every night between the hours of 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. And sometimes we play together. <laughs> No, if there is a God, I would think for me to honestly, he can't look like a person. Because if no. a God looks like a person, then I'm just like, that's a person. I think God would look like a mixture of all different people. Like Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He'd be like in a dress with red hair and piercings and like, but like with blue eyes <sighs> and like, you know, all different like human traits. Yeah. Or just like a talking turtle or something like that. Yeah, I like that. And that was asking for a friend. Aw, do you like my hat? No. Now, this week's topic is spirituality. And I think religions can actually be kind of sexy. Oh, the vestments, the hats, <gasps> the bald men. Mm. We're going to take a look at some religious attire and decide whether it's hot or just holy. Here we have a Catholic bishop. What do you think? 
He looks like, uh... Well, it's Memoirs of a Geisha if yeah. it was old white men being paid for their companionship. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah, he looks, it, he looks like he fashioned a winter scarf as a belt. Yeah, it looks like a cheap knockoff cashmere scarf you get in Canal Street and you just kind of wrapped it around him like an obi. You know, this is just holy. It's just so safe. And... Yeah, it's, it's like lukewarm for me. I'll say just holy. Yeah. Next up, a Greek Orthodox priest. I like the shape. I like the hat. It's a little unorthodox. Listen, you came here today. You knew it was going to happen. I love this. It's Father Christmas um, by Chanel. Yes. Abso that's exactly what it is. Yes. That's absolutely it's what it is. It's designer resort wear. Yeah. It's definitely hot. Hot. And hot, hot, hot. Now, this is an Eastern Orthodox nun who is also a nurse. Ooh. How do you feel about candid photography of yourself? Oh, I think, I think this is exquisite. I feel it's I'm giving beautiful. vulnerability. What do you do for your jowls? Um, you just wrap it up in some stiff, starched uh, nursey. Hey, nurse I'm looking for a religious group that'll accept me, but I can't show my neck. Yeah. This is you, girl. It's a definite hot. Yeah, this is hot and sexy. Wow, some Hasidic Jewish men celebrating Purim. They look like they're, I'm just gonna say this, they look like they're dressed up as Hasidic Jewish people for Halloween. That print is that loud print and tacky is and wonderful. Cool. What's going on, on the left? Is that hair? Is that supposed to be hair? I think those are the payas, but then it's like a wait a, a minute. Is that, that is the ultimate face framing layers. Face framing corkscrew. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, honey, there's a storm a coming, honey. It's acid rain. They look fierce. The look is yeah, hot. Yeah, it's hot. Hot the to try. Hot, and at the end of the day, burning up the Jewish streets guys. of um, uh, Brooklyn. Yeah. Now here we have a group of Mennonites. I've seen them in downtown Los Angeles. What did they do? They gave me a free CD. A CD of what? Of hymnals. I like those little bonnets too. Actually, I love a bonnet. It's yeah. adorable when you wear a bonnet all the time, and then your husband sees you take your hair down for the first. You're a Mennonite, you take your bonnet out, your husband comes instantly. Show a little ankle and he comes again. I like a people who are dressed sharp and let me listen to hymnals. It's hot for me. Yeah, I agree, but I don't want to f*** them, so it's just holy. And that was Hot or Holy. We're still talking about spirituality this week, and there's a belief that we're all part of a deity's grand design. Yeah, and if that's true, that deity is a pervert because we are disgusting. And so are animals. Because animals, they be f***. So we sent our Brian's out to find out how much people really know about the gross animal kingdom. This is Men on the Street. Guys? You know, a lot of people believe that God made the whole world and all the animals in it. But why did God make the animals so freaky? Mm. We're gonna quiz people on the strange world of animal sex. I saw a dog make sex to a tennis racket. Let's go. <laughs> What do you guys know about animal sex anatomies? You see, I own horses, so oh, I have been closer to a horse's penis than I should be. Oh, this is perfect. Oh my god, this is your game. This is your <laughs> this game. Is great. Okay. How long is the average hyena clitoris? I'm gonna guess a solid two feet. <laughs> yes, I feel like you're yeah, not even too long, but I... The hyena's not even too <laughs> You know, the intestine is like 10 feet. But the clit's not really coiled up in the inside. <laughs> I mean, maybe no, it is, I don't it know. Could be, it could be, it's a hyena. I don't know, 50 centimeters? Oh wow, you really thought that hyena had a... Uh, I thought it'd just be dragging along the floor with him. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry about the luggage, it's my clip. Yeah, they're not laughing, they're just fatigued. Oh man, I'm gonna say three inches. Girl. Bigger than that. It's bigger than that. Gotta dream big. It's actually seven inches. That C is big. This is huge. That's, mean, that's huge. Yeah. That was close to two feet. Male porcupines prompt females for sex by doing what? Mm, just sticking their nose up there. <laughs> Close. This one's not too weird. No, this is actually pretty normal. Sticking their quills out? Oh, mm. that's really cute, but no, it's grosser than that. Close? Soaking them in urine. Oh, okay. Have you ever you're, no, oh, you've no, done that before? I'm not, I'm not that kind of freaky guy, to be honest with you. I think in the human race, that would have an adverse effect. Well, if you're shy yeah. and you don't know how to like vocalize your needs, you can just piss on the bed and be like, I'm ready for sex. I thought he was into me, and then he never peed on me. I was like, <laughs> these are mixed signals. <laughs> have you ever been peed on? No. 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 <laughs> After mating, the marsupial mouse does what? Licks itself. Licks itself? Yeah. Yeah, well, close. Eats its prey. Mm. Takes a nap. <laughs> yes, basically, a dirt Dies nap. from a stress-induced <laughs> immune system breakdown. Sad. If I had a nickel, 
Can you imagine if people had that and they all just died from like the excitement of the first time? Well, you'd never have to worry about calling anybody back after a booty call. <laughs> Nobody you know? would have moms. Oh, that's true. Nobody would, yeah, it's a lot of layers. How many vaginas does the female kangaroo have? Female kangaroo? One? Yeah. More than one. Oh, I think it's like three. How did you know right? that? It is three. <laughs> How did you know that? You think it's three, hey. you know well, it's well, three. Well, I know it's three now. He watches a lot of YouTube. Where are the three located? <laughs> this is my quiz show. <laughs> Would it be a deal breaker if a, uh, a beautiful woman you were dating confessed that she had more than one vagina? I would, would be okay. Like, I would feel happy, yeah. It's yeah, like, I'm happy. It's a good thing, yeah. 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 But what if it was in her neck? Oh. I can kiss better, you know, yeah. It's, See? Yeah. Perfect. I like your attitude. Banana slugs mate with penises that grow out of their... Forehead. It's where you get dickhead from, no? Uh, out of their head? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Barbara, you do watch Animal Planet. Dude, yeah. don't banana slugs stab each other, too, to have sex? Oh. Yeah. They don't have any, like, sex organs. They, like, and they're all the same sex. <laughs> 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 I think we learned a lot about ourselves. Yeah, and animal penises. Back to you, ladies. Doggy dick. Wow, thanks, guys. That was fun, educational, and energizing. Yeah, now get inside and flick the ladybugs off your taints, you rubes. Hey, guys, you know we love most things, but some things rub me the wrong way. Yeah, so these are some of those things in a segment we call... Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Uh. You know, I don't like a breakup that's so rocky, I have to move again and change my name. Uh, 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 uh. I don't like uh, libraries, they're stupid. Uh, uh. Put the books outside. <laughs> What's gonna happen to them? I don't like people who don't put their makeup all the way down their neck into their chest. Uh, uh, uh. Newsflash, your ears aren't the same color as your face. Wait, what? People's ears, they don't put makeup on their ears when they have like an updo or something, and then you have Beautiful face, red ear. Guilty. <gasps> I don't like people who aren't in control of their digestive reality. <sighs> oh. I don't like pulling out. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Now this week's topic is spirituality. A good Christian should use the Bible as their Bible. That's right. Weren't you a Christian? I was indeed a Christian, a Catholic Christian. So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to read you a passage that's either from the Bible or from a current song. Okay. And you're going to tell me, is it song or scripture? OK. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. That was a song. Not unless it's by a pop artist named John 15, 13. It's scripture, mama. OK. For you equipped me with strength for the battle. You made those who rise against me sink under me. I'm going to say that's scripture. Yeah, it's it's scripture, girl. It's <laughs> Psalm 1839. Psalm. Psalm. It's Psalm. Psalm. He was a psychologist. Then thou shalt cut off her hand. Thine eye shall not pity her. I mean, if that's a song, whose f***ing song is that, bitch? That is from Stronger by Britney Spears. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, I would say that's scripture. What is this Deuteronomy? Bitch, you know what Deuteronomy is? Oh, Get the science the... of hooking up with dudes? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I permit no woman to teach or have authority over men. She is to keep silent. That is Creedence Clearwater. I was just gonna say that! I love Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> that's scripture. That's scripture, yeah. And that's, uh... Um, By someone named Timothy. Timothy don't you know You're gonna listen shit. to someone named Timothy? And that was song or scripture. Turns out you don't know much about either. Give me that. Um, this is a long book. Once again, you guys, we have the greatest fans in the world, and we love to hear from you. So it's time for Mailbag. Mailbag. This week's words of encouragement are for Trixie. Uh, Trixie, your makeup sucks. It looks like a unicorn f***ed some candy and then puked. It does not say that. Yeah. In Vietnamese, no less. Yeah. How does that make you feel? How does a unicorn f candy? I don't know. It's a little imp yeah, yeah, yeah. This makes me feel someone tried to cut me to the bone and pierce my heart. Mm. But joke's on you. My heart's impenetrable. Ask my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and that's mailbag.
And now the moment you've all been waiting for it. This week, we're going uh, for religious dating apps. Go find your, um, go find, you can find the love of your life online as one does, but with a, um, a focus on your uh, faith of choice. You know, let's say that you want to meet somebody religious. You can't just fish through the trash of Tinder oh. hoping to find someone whose profile pictures them like holding a Torah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Are you telling me there's a database of handsome men with lush chest hair and both a mother and a father? Yes, I would like to sign up. And listen, you meet a nice Christian guy from Christian Mingle, yeah. at least you know, Every Saturday night, he's got to come home at some point to change for church. Yeah. He probably likes country music. I'm into that. Christian rap. No one likes Christian, Christian rap. Christian rap, <laughs> seriously. Yes, yes. Christian rap? Christian rap. You ever wanted to rhyme in an urban way for the Lord? <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, well, we made it through a whole episode about God without being struck dead by an invisible force. That's good. No, and you know, it's not that hot in here today. God's not cooking us. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I'm feeling a little dehydrated. Can we turn some wine back into water? <laughs> They're not all good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real lesson we've learned today. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 Lamb of God. Bye. See you next we'll Sunday. Take away the things of the world. Our God is an awesome, awesome God. God. That's right. He's so big and cloudy. Okay. He's so big and cloudy. <laughs> <laughs>